PC VR, what is it? Why would you want to do it? Can your system even handle it? And how do you do it if it can? I'm VR Boomer. I'm going to answer those questions for you right now. Let's get to it. Simply put, PC VR is just attaching your VR headset to your computer. Now, the Quest 2 is unique in consumer VR headsets um, at the time of its release, as it is the only fully self-contained VR headset. Every other headset requires that you connect it to your PC. There's two ways to do it with the Quest 2. One is by using a USB cable. The other is wirelessly. And we're going to go over both of these later in the video. So why would you want to connect your VR headset to your PC, especially with a cable? Well, the most obvious reason why you'd want to connect your PC to your VR headset is because it increases your library of games substantially. There are a host of games available on platforms like Steam, and connecting to your PC also gives you access to SideQuest, which is a whole bunch of free and developmental games including some real standouts like Gorilla Tag that are also available only if you go with a PC VR. And in some cases with PC VR games, you're going to get substantially improved uh, visual quality, graphics quality, compared to the Oculus Quest 2 version. You can see a great example right here. So how can you tell if your computer can even handle running VR games? Well, if your computer is a laptop and you haven't specifically bought a gaming laptop, then probably it's going to have a lot of trouble even running VR. And if you even can, it'll certainly have to run it on the lowest visual settings. And this is probably true for your computer as well, if it's a desktop. This is the reason why. This is a graphics card. You can think of a graphics card as kind of a mini computer inside of your computer, whose only job is to produce the images that show up in the display, whether that display is your regular monitor or the display inside your VR headset. Without this, your regular CPU is what has to do all of the image processing along with all of the other things that it's trying to do. And that really limits how much it can do with their graphics. So how can you tell if your system will even be able to run a PC VR game? Well, a good way to check is to look up a specific game. Here we're looking at Half-Life Alex, and this is the Steam store. And if you scroll on down to the bottom, you will see their minimum system requirements, a 64-bit processor, operating system of Windows 10, uh, the processor that they're looking for you to have, graphics card and memory available. But you can also check other resources. If you just do a search for Half-Life Alex, Half Alex system requirements, there are other websites that will give their suggestions for recommended amounts of memory and recommended graphic cards to get better performance out of the game. So how can you find your system information to see if it can handle the game you'd like to play? Well, you come down here to your start menu, then you click on settings, then you click on system, then you scroll down over here and you click on about, and here is all of your system information. Here's your processor, your RAM, your system type, which is 64-bit, and the uh, operating system you have, which in this case is Windows 10 Home. What if you need to look up your graphics card to see if you even have one? Well, you can click here on Device Manager. This is in that same About screen. And over here, you'll see Display Adapters. We can bring that down, and there we have our NVIDIA GeForce GTX Ti. That's the kind of graphics card that you have. Now, if you have a graphics card installed, it's very likely that you'll have control panel information or some other programs associated with that graphics card. So we can click on that. In this case, it's NVIDIA because I have a GeForce graphics card in it. If you click over here on help, you can bring up system information and there'll be something similar like this in just about any one. And here is all the graphics card information. One of the good things to know about this is you don't actually have to understand what all of these numbers mean specifically like here we have ram and i have 16 gigabytes of ram 15.9 usable gb stands for gigabytes you don't need to know what a gigabyte is you can just see that number 16 right there and then compare that to what the system's looking for now the minimum specifications for half like alex were 12 
One of the sites recommended 32, so I'm falling somewhere in between that. A little bit above the minimum specs, um, but still we should be plenty good enough to run the game. You can just compare numbers to numbers. And if you have a question about, say, for instance, your graphics card or your processor, I've got an i7-9700 CPU here. You can always go to the internet and say, how does this particular processor that I have compare with the one that is required for the minimum specifications? And you just Google that and you can get that information that way. So for example, the minimum requirements for Half-Life Alex is a Core i5-7500. Now very typically with computer numbers, bigger numbers are almost always better. But we can always go over to Google and type how does a Core i5 compare to a, whoops, to a Core i7? And here we have a quick answer on what the difference is between an i5 and an i7. And you can get your information that way. So now that we've touched on can you even do it, let's talk about how do you do it. There's two ways to hook up your Quest to your PC. One of them is with a USB cable, which is the least expensive and most accessible. The other is using a wireless hookup, and we will touch on both of those. The wireless is with the AirLink. So let's talk USB cables first. And the first thing you need to know is the difference between USB-A and USB-C, and hopefully these are in focus. This is a USB-A connector. This is a USB-C connector. You can see the C is much smaller than the A. This is what is on your Quest 2. Most PCs will have definitely have USB A's. They may or may not all have USB C's. So you want to check your computer first. Um, if you can get cables that have USB C on one end and USB A on the other end, or you can get them with both USB C's on the ends. You can even get USB A's on both ends, but that wouldn't do you any good. You need a C to an A. I absolutely very strongly and imperatively recommend getting a USB-C with a little right angle connection like this. Let me show you why. When you have the USB-C connected to your Quest, as you can see, you want to have the cable running off the side like this. If the cable's coming out like this, even if you secure it, having that big length of cable up here is going to put a lot of strain on this USB-C connector. Now, they're not super fragile, but they're not indestructible either. So you want to minimize the strain. That's why a right angle connection there is very, very important. It also is less cumbersome having that big wire looping off the side like that. And you absolutely want to get some of these Velcro connectors. Most of these cables come with them. And you want to tie this cable down to whatever headset you're using, whether it's off the factory headset or if you've got an aftermarket one like what I've got here. This secures this connection and puts all the strain on these Velcro places instead of on this little connector here. You want to minimize strain on that. Even if it doesn't break it outright, if you're putting a lot of strain on this, it's going to reduce the lifespan of that connector, and you really don't want to do that. Also, your PC is going to need to have USB 3 or 3.1. Let me show you what that looks like right now. Now, one of the ways you can tell if you have a USB 3 or 3.1 is by the coloration of the plastic tab inside the USB-A slot. Also, you've got this SS icon, which stands for super speed. And also, you have this little lightning bolt, which indicates that this is a Thunderbolt port, which gives enhanced performance. You can also see on the back of my system here, I've got a whole bunch of USB ports. Most of them are USB-A. There is a USB-C. And the 10 next to these USB ports indicate USB 3.1, which is a slight improvement over the 3.0. You also want to make sure you get a USB cable that's long enough to give you plenty of freedom of movement. I would recommend a minimum of 15 feet, 16 feet, which is around 3 meters. Um, this is going to depend greatly on how much play space you have, what kind of games you're playing, how much moving around you want to do. This one is 20 or 25 feet long. So make sure you got plenty of length to work with. Now, I'm not going to recommend which brand of USB cable you should be buying because, frankly, I haven't done any product testing, so I can't give you an informed opinion on that. I will, however, tell you not to buy the Quest branded USB cable, Meta or Oculus or whatever it is these days because they're charging $70 for that, and that is 
ludicrously overpriced. I think I paid under $30 for this cable. You can get exceptionally good USB cables of very high quality for 30 bucks or less. Quest wants more than double what that is, so don't bother with them. If you'd like information, there's plenty of resources out there. You can check YouTube. I highly recommend uh, Linus Tech Tips. They do a, a lot of in-depth product testing, and you can find good recommendations through them for which brand of cable probably you want to be buying. All right, now let's go into the Oculus, and I'll show you what hooking up the cable looks like once you're in the system. So we're going to plug in our USB cable. First thing we do is we're going to get this message board asking our system to allow access to the data. Um, annoyingly, you have to click through this every single time. And I'm going to allow. Now let's go over how to get it hooked up to the computer. So push your Oculus button. And this is under the settings tab here, the quick settings. We've got Oculus link here. We're just going to click on that. And that will bring us to our Oculus link screen in a few moments. Unless the system is giving me a, ah, there we go. All right, and here we see the menu for Oculus. Let's bring this up a little bit higher so we can see it. This is our disable the Oculus link. This is our explore. This is actually our home. In the Oculus Link, you've got a home that you can mess around with. You can change the settings. You can change how it looks. You can add decorations and stuff, which is very cool to have. Here's the library of games. Now, this is going to be a different library. You will not have access to the same games here that you do when you're not linked to your computer and vice versa. So you cannot access the games that you have on your Quest that aren't... PC games through here. Here's a store where we can go shopping for games, as you would expect. Here's our social media things where we can contact friends that we might have. A notification screen. We've got a simple settings screen, guardian graphics, experiments, and social. Click on home. That will bring us back to our, our home that I've mentioned. Over here is a virtual desktop. This will actually show your computer desktop. And you can see right here is the internal sh shared storage. Sorry, I had trouble with that word. Um, you can click on this to get to your video captures and stuff. Now, something that's important to remember, if I can get this to click, click, there we go. Double click to open. One thing that's important to remember from a hardware perspective, an Oculus Quest is very much like taking an Android smartphone and strapping it to your face. This is why we see an Android folder in here. This is an Android operating system. And you see right here, we've got an Oculus folder. If we double click on that, we've got screenshots and video shots. So we can go in here. Should be able to double click that. It's a little tricky with the controller, I'll tell you. But you can, if you reach your mouse, you can actually just use your mouse regularly in this. And we've got screenshots here that I did from Resident Evil. And over here, we've got some video shots. Most of these are going to be Resident Evil related too, because that's what I've been filming lately. And we've got some Beat Saber ones in here. And you can see just how terrible I am at Beat Saber. Now, this is actually opening up on my PC right now. See, look at that. You can just play the videos. And let's say you want to save that video, you can actually just drag that right over to your desktop and it will copy it onto your desktop. So that's a really great feature right there. Here is our Oculus. I guess it's not going to be Oculus anymore. I guess it's meta at this point when I'm recording it. This is our Quest 2 home. Store, library, we can download things. I can also access over here Steam VR or my Steam games or anything like that that I want to X. Uh, access. There's virtual desktop, all sorts of good things, and devices and settings, which is really good to have in here too. All right, now let's check out AirLink. So to be able to use AirLink, you're going to need a Wi-Fi 5 or 6 router. And also, very importantly, 
you're going to need to have your computer hooked directly through an Ethernet cable. Now, just like with the USB cable, I'm not going to recommend which brand of router you should be buying. This is the one that I happen to own myself personally. It works just fine. I get really great uh, wireless connectivity with it. Um, not only in the same room as with my PC, but also I've got a play space down in my cellar that's not super distant, but maybe 20 feet away from the router, but through the floor. And I still get connectivity without any problem. All right, here we are back inside the Quest and let's talk about how to set up AirLink. So we come over here to quick settings, click on settings up there. This is our main settings menu down here under experimental. We've got AirLink. We're just gonna turn that on. These are the requirements. It lists out the requirements that you're gonna need. You do want your PC connected directly to your wireless network. You don't want it connected through, you don't want your PC to also be running on Wi-Fi. So we click on AirLink. Here we can see my computer has already been identified. We click on that. We click pair. And now we have to confirm this pairing code on the PC. And you can see here, we've got our pairing code. We click confirm here. And now we've got the pairing code confirmed. We're gonna click continue. Now we are connected to the PC and all we have to do is hit launch as soon as this notification. And this brings up again, our linked menu, which is the same as you'll find with the cable. And here we are back in the same screen. We've got all these same buttons. You can see I'm back in my home space. Let's turn off the explore. We're back in my home space. We've got avatar editors. We can add desktop panels, go to the remote desktop, just like we were before. And as you see, I've got my screen recording software up. <laughs> um, and here we are back here in the screen again. So it really is that simple. The only requirement is making sure you have good Wi-Fi to management. And when you're ready to log out, you just click this air link right here. It'll ask you if you want to quit. There is also, uh, you can set your bit rate here and you'll go back to your primary menu again. So there it is, a basic overview on how to link your Oculus Quest 2 to your PC. If you have any questions or if you think there's something I should have covered but I didn't, let me know in the comments down below. Hopefully you find this video useful. Uh, like, share, and subscribe. And as always, be kind to one another, have fun, and I'll see you in the next video.